everything song uh, will be available on all streaming platforms this coming Friday, June 14th. On Saturday, we're going to have a release party at the Camp Store in South Carlsbad State Beach, South Carlsbad, sunny California, Carlsbad, California, North County, San Diego. Should be a good one. We got uh, this Saturday, we got Ginger Roots, uh, a local favorite, uh, reggae local reggae band playing tonight. Going to go over there, show my love to the boys there. It's always a good time when they're there. Oh, these are my friend Donnie got me some blue blockers. You can see the blue blockers. And then my other friend got me these, which are kind of bizarre. Maybe I'll wear these. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, let's give these a whirl. So, um, all right. So, everything. Uh, so, basically, inside the song, I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, recording process, the writing process of this song, the people who were involved with the song, and, uh, you know, what, what I was thinking as far as the lyrics go. Now, this song is really interesting because a lot of times when I am just kind of looking to mix it up, I'll go back into all my archives of older work. I have so many songs that never have been released. Um, this particular one... Uh, I believe was from a body of work that I was going to call Spirit Animal Tattoo. Uh, everything was starting to line up for that album, but then COVID happened. So um, we all know how that was. No need to dwell on uh, that. But um, I had oh, some of these car alarms going off. Uh, so, so anyway... Um, I was going through and I was listening to some of these old songs and I noticed that there were two tracks that were uh, disabled and on mute. So I turned those things on and I was just, oh, just absolute floored. Um, so basically, um, I had a number of songs that I would give, I still have a bunch of the ones. So I think what I was doing is I would get my demos, I'd record some stuff with Mike, my Connor drummer. Um, and then I would have Marco uh, Savoya play some bass tracks. And I'd have uh, my friend Mike Pritchard, who plays uh, keyboards in the band, uh, to put over uh, uh, some, uh, some Nord electro six kind of magic you know like the the stuff that he plays on stage there's a lot of electric piano sounds that we that we love to to use a lot of organ sounds some synth sounds um anyway if you guys have seen us live you know exactly what i'm talking about and uh when i heard his contributions to the song it was it was staggeringly good like like uh, it just flipped me off and uh, <laughs> flip me off yeah <laughs> no it just it was it was amazing it, it was it was amazing and I was like oh this sounds cool and I just I started I I think I had some scattered lyrics to it uh I immediately I must have been we must have had a good swell that week so I was surfing and uh I just wrote all the lyrics the chorus everything right then and there sung a couple rounds of it and then within a couple weeks i had uh made the final uh vocal takes on that too as well there was some back and forth that we had because um the way that i had lay out um demos if i'm going to have a soloist play on it i will go and if there's a chorus to a you know verses and chorus what I'll do sometimes is to allow them to kind of uh, take their time and get into the solo with the idea of shrinking it down to maybe eight bars. I'll like copy that rhythm section out so that they can, they can get their ideas out. And I was like, explore everything. And 
when it came time where I finished up the Everything Transforms into Something Beautiful chorus, he started this uh, this crazy uh, prog rock sounding organ, you know, something out of like 70s prog rock. And uh, I, I was like, well, that sounds awesome. And um, so we just kind of, he ran with that. Which, which I was really happy with. Um, he ran with that. And um, when I came back to him, when I, later when I kind of rediscovered and unearthed this older recording, uh, I talked to him. I was like, hey, man, this is a good one. Maybe we might have to do it again. And then I gave it a couple of lessons. I was like, no, his takes, as always, his takes are like perfection. Some people, uh, when you work with them, it's best to let them do the first two. The first two takes are like gold, and uh, yeah, you can have them do a hundred takes, but you're kind of wasting their time and your own time. There's something to be said about like letting people, like especially if they are just kind of. It's one thing to be like very well rehearsed, knowing a song, and going through it. Uh, you know, a song that you played thousands of times uh, on stage. It's a completely other thing for a songwriter like me when they first introduce a song to a uh, musician, a soloist, a uh, band member, and to see how they interpret the song. Because I'll hear it a certain way, but any competent musician will take it and add their own... Uh, you know, uh, flavor to it, and, and and it makes it better. You know, as a, as a songwriter, usually, if you choose good musicians to collaborate with, they're going to help you uh, realize not the not the song that you you wrote the way that you wrote it, but the true potential of that song. So, Mike and I, when we talked about his keyboard uh, performance in the recording. Um, we were thinking, okay, like, let's just, you know, let's just do the intro, verse, chorus, give them a little bit of taste of that prog rock stuff, and then right back into the chorus. Now, you know, that that's probably like a formula that, you know, people that want radio play or, but after I, I, I did the, all the editing and I, after I did a B comparison of like trying to shorten it and make it more flow, I always went back to the, uh, to the version where he just, because it came out of nowhere. Like you, you hear the, like the guitars, the Mellotron's intro, the guitars are in there. And then when that prog rock, it kind of like is a spaceship blasting off. And um, you have to buckle up, buckle yourself in. And ended up deciding, in the official version of this, I do have a truncated version of the song, but my official version of this song is going to be, you know, everything extended. The official video is going to have extended. And that, that to me, is the way that the, the music... Um, the performance of the music and the, the musicians that were involved, that's to me the best version that, that um, out of all the versions that I created. Um, so uh, talking about the uh, official music video, uh, there's a lot of footage of surf trips that I've been on in Indonesia on a boat called The Addiction. Uh, wonderful people. Um, Jeannie is an amazing uh, Jeannie LaRosa's amazing, uh, videographer. He had drones. He's in the water with us. Amazing surf photographer. Um, uh, so that's, we're in, I'm in the lineup on, of these, uh, it's my friends at surfing cause she's a, a way, 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 uh, better surfer than I am. Like the opening sequence is that day. Um, I actually got throttled pretty, pretty properly, uh, brutal hold down, but you know, it's one of those things where, um, you know, I, I drop in the board, you do an airdrop board disappears underneath my foot, just throttled, you know, just the full brunt of the wave 
hit you. And I remember like being under, being held under and like, you know, your lungs like ready to burst, like you need to breathe, man. And like also another thought like, Hey, dumbass, you're going to, you're going to drown out here in the middle of nowhere. Get your ass to the surface immediately. And you try to relax as much as possible, man. But the violence sometimes that you get uh, thrown around in down there uh, underwater, the the whole training is you got to relax. You got to, you got to just take, take the beating in stride. And then the second you feel your opportunity to start using your uh, strength to get to the surface, you do it. Uh, it's, you, you really got to, you got to kind of feel like you got to basically first relax everything, not panic, let the, let the wave move you. And then basically as you feel it start to lose you, its grip on you, you bolt, bolt to the surface. Anyway, I remember bolting the service and catching another one like right in the face. Like, uh, anyway, so that's that. That's the reason I used uh, Steve Lindgren. Uh, I, I think is on the majority ones. Um, uh, so is Richard Warner's. He's uh, it's just <laughs> they're local great surfers, and it's a it's it's a pleasure. It's always like a pleasure for me to watch guys like that surf. Anyway. Um, uh, let's talk about the lyrics a little bit. Um, uh, the lyrics kind of wrote themselves as I, as I said, uh, as soon as I was heard, uh, Mike's keyboard performance over top of kind of this demo I laid out, uh, I immediately, uh, started thinking of my relationship with surf, the ocean, my, my relationship with the sport of surfing, my relationship with the ocean, my relationship with my family, my kids. Um, I feel like I, I draw a lot of my inspiration and strength from the ocean. Uh, it's testing yourself against the force of nature is, um, it's one, you know, one of, uh, if you're a surfer, it's one of life's great challenges. Um, now, the first part of the song is really talks about almost like surfing as almost like a, almost like a yoga practice where, you know, the feelings that you have as you're going on like a big day when it's particularly, not particularly warm out in the morning, cold, you're getting into the cold air, you're immediately kind of jolted back to your senses and then it's game time. It's on. You like, have to look and you have to work your ass off to get to the lineup, get out to the lineup. And then you have like this serenity. A lot of times I, I think of my ancestors that have passed on before me when I'm out there. I think of my family. It's just a, a very peaceful, serene place when you're, when you're out in the lineup. Um, now, the first part of the song kind of talks about my relationship with surfing. Uh, the second part uh, is a nod to my daughter, Maisie, who uh, we kind of joke and call her our little golden girl. Um, I mean, she's a big, she's now, she's she's uh, uh, going into eighth grade next year. So she's certainly not a little girl anymore. Um, and to be able to see her grow her kindness to others, uh, my wife's personality traits in her and just how good she is. Um, that's obviously a huge inspiration to, uh, not only just me as a musician, as a father and as, as a member of a huge family to see my kids as active parts of our, of, of, the large family, the Irish Catholic family that I was raised with is a huge thing. So, you know, the last part of the song, I see how you're grown. Have you, you've never felt more at home and a skin all your own, yet you look so much like your mother. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a treat to be able to sing a song with them in mind because as the words come out, you can just feel the love in your heart. That's one of the reasons why I, I, I write a lot of my songs about my wife, you know, and I'll see, I'll see her out in the audience and 
I'll sing and, you know, basically when you, when you allow yourself to do that and sing directly to people, everything else drop, you know, just kind of fades away. And, you know, the, the, you know, you stop worrying about missing a chord or something like that. And you're really able to feel each word that comes out and, uh, each part of the music. So, yeah, that was everything, uh, inside the song. Uh, it's getting about time to go over to, uh, see how ginger roots are doing. So thank you everybody for your time. Thanks for listening. Thanks for supporting local music. And, um, June 14th, everything, give it a listen. Everybody have a great summer 2024. And, uh, I'll have another single out soon enough, man. Everybody have a good summer. Behave yourselves. Happy Saturday night. Listen to everything Friday, June 14th. Ram out. Cheers.